So now that we've seen how we define the metric as a tensor, and we've begun to look at how this tensor essentially defines our geometry, let's explore in a bit more detail how we use the metric to um, essentially measure the lengths of vectors in our geometry. So as I've said, the metric we give by giving a line element, which essentially expresses the infinitesimal distance between points in our geometry. We essentially express this quantity by just defining a tensor, the metric tensor. And we've now begun exploring a little bit how this object actually functions as a tensor. And we saw that it essentially is going to, well, it's a 0, 2 tensor, it's waiting to eat two vectors. But we saw the way that we should kind of view the action of this metric is that it eats one of the vectors and it kind of does something to the components. We saw how it effectively lowers the components and turns them into one form components. And so when we feed two vectors into the metric, one vector is turned into a one form that then eats the other vector. And now I started to allude to the fact that we're going to now be able to use this metric to essentially measure lengths or distances of vectors. And now what exactly do we mean by this? Well, essentially, if we have some vector, let's just say, for argument's sake, it's a vector that lives in some real three-dimensional space, it's going to have some set of components that we could decompose. It might have, so let's say this is our vector, it might have some set of components, let's say Vx, Vy, this is V. So these two kind of vector decomposition arrows represent the components of this vector V. And just kind of for simplicity, I've drawn the vector on a two-dimensional plane. So this vector can be expressed now in components. These would be components using the, the x coordinate basis and the y coordinate basis. If we're labeling our coordinates as x and y. And now what we essentially saw is how we can plug this vector into the metric. It's going to then create a kind of one form that corresponds to that vector. And then that contraction of this one form with this vector is going to essentially produce a real number. And that real number we can associate with the length of this vector. So I just want to formally write this down now really quickly for R2. I kind of briefly showed you that we can realize, well, R2 is just a space, but let's now give it a metric. Let's define geometry on this R2. Probably the simplest possible geometry we could define would be the Euclidean geometry, in which the metric is simply just the identity. So we usually express the identity as a, the Kronecker delta, essentially, you can realize this Kronecker delta object as just a matrix where the delta zero zero component is one, and then all of the orthogonals are zero. So the Kronecker delta is essentially just the identity matrix. And now what we realize happens to our metric, we can essentially just now express the line element for Euclidean space as the following. So we might as well have not even bothered writing this down, but just leaving it there for completeness. This is the metric components of the Euclidean metric. It's just the identity matrix. But now let's see what happens when we feed in a vector into this Euclidean metric. Well, it's going to be very simple. Let's just remember we need to realize we're using these dx's, they're maps, they need to receive an input. So I'll just rewrite it using the angled brackets to make it explicit. And now what we're doing is we're subbing in this vector v, which we 
saw we can express as its components and then the coordinate basis. I should probably use a different index just for clarity. So of course we just sub in now our vector component which we can pull out and our basis component is just going to give us the current for delta and so when we simply evaluate this expression just plugging in one copy of the vector this is going to give us a, a delta mu sigma and then when we do this contraction the delta is just going to disappear and leave us with a v mu now hopefully you're following what i'm doing here i've just been subbing in the vector into one of these brackets this one is still here so we need to remember it and now we can simply just realize okay well this essentially this other delta that we've got here can be used to contract this mu index and it's going to leave us with a single lower new index and now this whole thing just becomes the new dx new so being absolutely clear on what we just did <clears throat> we're taking our euclidean metric we're trying to use it to calculate the length of this vector we've kind of done half of the calculation we've plugged in one copy of the vector into the metric it's got us through to here essentially just turning that vector into its corresponding one form so if this v is the arrow which i've drawn this then stack of sheets is this one form here and now what we need to do to measure the length of this vector now is just to plug another copy of it into this one form here so let's just do that we have the component the new out in front and we plug in to dx new another copy of the vector and now of course pulling our component out again we're just going to get a delta new sigma which is going to effectively just turn that sigma index into a new and this whole thing I'll just write it out quickly v new v sigma and then the delta new sigma from here and then when we contract against the delta we just kill the delta and turn that other index into a new so now this is the expression which we arrived at previously essentially when you when you insert a vector into the euclidean metric or you insert two copies of the vector rather into the euclidean metric one or it turns one set of components into one form components and then you just crack, contract the one form components with the vector components and so now what this essentially this expression here is doing is just plugging the vector into the one form version of itself and we kind of saw pictorially what that's going to do it's essentially just going to count how many of these one form surfaces were pierced by that vector and now just doing this counting is just going to give us a real number and we interpret that real number as the length of this vector now we should be absolutely clear what we're doing is we're essentially just assigning uh, in principle arbitrary real number but we're just identifying that real number and saying that it's the length now what what really do we mean by length well essentially we mean if you were to lie this vector just lie it along a single real axis you could then look well if you place its tail at the origin you can then kind of measure how far along the axis it extends the tip is just going to reach some number value along that real axis and now we kind of associate the number value that that tip reaches to be this distance here so we're essentially using this kind of interval idea and we're measuring or really we're interpreting intervals measured from the origin just essentially giving us real numbers those real numbers correspond to the distance 
with the length of the interval specified by that real number. And so when we evaluate this one form eating the vector, it just counts how many planes we pierce, and that real number effectively represents the length that we would, essentially, the length that that vector would be if we had its um, tail lying at the origin, just measuring it along a single axis. And so what we now have to realise is that this Euclidean metric is essentially just kind of reproducing Pythagoras' theorem. If we just now look at what this expression essentially is saying, it's saying, okay, take the V0 and V0 components, multiply them together, and then add up the results. So we could just say that this ds squared Euclidean, we just kind of take our vector components and we square them and then add together the results. And now this looks a lot like our Euclidean, or sorry, our Pythagorean theorem. And so if we were just now realizing we're essentially using this vector decomposition to form a right hand a right triangle, and we're essentially just applying Pythagoras' theorem to calculate this distance. But we've seen that the, the form of Pythagoras' theorem really kind of arises now by making this choice of Euclidean metric and working through essentially the definition, we arrive at something which resembles Pythagoras' theorem. And so, just another brief point to make, this one set of one-form components that we formed using the metric, well, we have to remember that in this simple Euclidean case, the metric is just the identity. So essentially, when we form our one-form components by using the metric to lower a vector component, essentially all we're doing is we're just multiplying this by the identity matrix. So the one-form components are going to be exactly the same as the vector components in this simple case of the Euclidean geometry. But now as this metric becomes more general and not the identity matrix, we're going to see that vectors and one-forms components can be drastically different. And doing these kind of calculations is going to become slightly less trivial. So in summary then, we're Essentially, I've introduced you now, or shown you the really simple calculation of how we, first of all, define a Euclidean metric simply as being the identity matrix. And then we went through and we saw how we can essentially use this Euclidean metric to compute uh, now the lengths of vectors. And uh, really, we should be very clear about what, what it is we're computing. We're computing a real number, which is the contraction of this vector with itself as a one form. And now in this kind of nice Euclidean picture, we can really easily associate this real number with the length of that vector, understood kind of as an interval measured from some arbitrary origin. And so we saw how the metric essentially performs this computation by taking one of the vectors turning that vector into a one form and then contracting the resulting one form an original vector and we saw in the simple Euclidean case how essentially we just arrive at a simple expression which is just kind of squaring and summing the components which we realize is essentially just Pythagoras' theorem and hopefully you should kind of if you remember something called the dot product from kind of elementary vector analysis you can now realise that while well, the dot product, all it is, is just an example of this metric contraction.